How's it going, everybody? I'm this is Coach Wade, and what I do is I teach families about the five pillars of financial stability. There's typically five key areas of concern that most American families have, and if I can get you good in these five areas, you and your family do very well financially. The first area of concern is going to be debt. Would you guys say that most American families are in debt or out of debt? Okay, most family, American families are in debt. And those families that are in debt, would you say those debts are typically under control or out of control? Out of control. So you answer two correct questions there, or you get two correct answers. Most American families are in debt, and the debt that they're in is out of control. So by definition, what is debt that is out of control? Okay, so debt that's out of control is debt that does not have a specified payoff date. For example, you may have several different credit cards, some you're paying a minimal balance on, some you may be paying a little extra on, some are 22%, some are 12%, the list goes on. But the thing is, you don't know when exactly that debt will be paid off. So by definition, that is debt that's out of control. So in contrast, what is debt that's under control? Debt that's under control is going to be the opposite. It's debt that has a specified payoff date. For example, you go to the dealership, you buy a car, they give you a five-year loan. You know exactly at the end of five years that that loan will be paid off. You have a fixed payment, fixed, fixed interest rate, and fixed term. So therefore, this is debt that's under control. But if I can show you guys how to eliminate 30 years worth of debt within nine years or less, would you be interested? Quite sure many of you would. There's a pretty much a strategy that you can utilize called debt stacking, where you can eliminate your debt within a fraction of amount of time, not really paying anything different out of pocket. But of course, if you can pay extra to help accelerate it even more, more power to you and the faster you can get out of debt. So this is huge. We also, another area of concern is life insurance, okay? You know, what I like to say is that most people aren't taught how to buy life insurance. You're not taught this in high school or college. They don't teach you this at your job, how to buy life insurance. You see, most people do not know how to buy life insurance. It doesn't matter what your social economic status is, what your background is. Most people do not know how to buy life insurance. Well, I'm happy to say that, you know, I take honor and teaching people basic financial concepts, and we begin with the topic of life insurance. Teaching you the truth about life insurance. There's generally two different types of life insurances. We'll go on that. To, we'll go into that a little later on. But the thing is, most people do not have enough when it comes to life insurance. A good rule of thumb is have at least ten times your annual salary um, in terms of life insurance. So if your annual salary is seventy thousand. The rule of thumb is to have at least 700000 give you an idea. A lot of people are underinsured, grossly underinsured. Um, they may have, they may make $50,000 a year, but they only have $100,000 of coverage. And that's when they, that spouse needs to ask themselves, if their main breadwinner were to pass away, how long would it take for them to go through their insurance money? So if you have somebody that makes $50,000 a year, insurance policy for 100000 real quick math, the beneficiary or the loved one that's left behind might be able to survive at least two years off of that. How does that loved one feel? Do they feel that they'll probably have to downgrade the house, get rid of the car in order to survive? We want to make sure that we set up those that are behind us, set them up properly so they're not scrounging around trying to figure out what to do financially when we can take care of these things up front and right away and very affordably. So that's the that's the thing. So life insurance is not as expensive as a lot of people may think. Um, it's, it's really doesn't cost a lot if you're healthy, right, or and you're young enough, right. But the more unhealthy you become, the older you become, the more um, that insurance is going to cost you. So it's good to start now because you'll be no healthier than you are right now. Right now is the time. A lot of times when it comes to life insurance, I ask people, you know, from a scale of one to ten, how important is it for you to make sure you're Family is properly protected. Everybody says a 10, but they're grossly underinsured. So make sure you do something about that when it comes to your life insurance. All right. Another area of concern is retirement. 
Question to ask yourself, are you 100% sure you're going to have a great retirement or do you guys have some doubt? Believe it or not, most people have doubt. Think about it. But roughly about 57% of Americans don't even have $1,000 saved up. So no, so more or less, they don't have a retirement. If 57% people, 57% of people don't have at least $1,000 saved up, that's a huge gap. And most people have insurance products that they really don't understand. When you ask, you know, what is your level of understanding? One to 10, one being, you know, not having a lot of understanding, and 10 is having a great amount of understanding about your retirement. You hear a lot of, a lot of fives and sevens, so people are making financial decisions based off of five and seven level understanding. So that's something that you want, we want to attack right away to give you some knowledge and know-how about some of these basic principles when it comes to investing in retirement. All right. Next area of concern is going to be education. All right. How important is it for your kids to go to college? Another question I ask you know, a lot of people, you know, how important is it for your child to go to college on a scale of one to 10? And most of them are going to say, of course, you know it. They're going to say a 10 is very important for the child to go to college. But then you ask the question, how much have you set aside? You hear crickets. They haven't done anything yet. The, the kid is 12 years old. And it's, it's not that this is a bad parent. It's not that they don't want their child to go to college. It's just that life comes at you very hard. Things are so expensive today. But the thing is, it can be managed if you structure your finances properly. That's why we say a written plan or a budget is essential to your financial success. You know, I like to preach zero-based budgeting, okay? Zero-based budgeting, which means that you're setting up your budget each and every paycheck. So it's not one budget that you use forever. You know, it's going to constantly change. You have different needs in the month. You might need an oil change this month. Or, or you might need a, change, a new tire. So your budget changes every single month. So it's a living document here. But you're going to make sure you budget down to zero with every single paycheck. So... You can do things like saving for your children's education, getting the health savings account, all right? So, or educational savings account, ESA. So, these are some things you may want to think about, um, okay? You want to get that, um, I think I said the wrong thing a little earlier. I think I said an HSA, but not, not a health savings account. So, let me back that up a little bit, but a 529 plan. Okay, if I didn't say that, I'm not sure if I mixed that up or not. But a 529 plan is a plan that you want to get for education. So a 529 plan or an ESA, an educational savings account. How much you need to set aside depends on how long um, that you waited. You know, um, is your child a newborn or are they 15 years old? So how much you'll contribute depends on how old the child is and how much, you know, longer they have before they end up going to college. All right, mercy savings. This is important. Remember I said 57% of people don't even have at least $1,000 saved up. Now here we are at emergency savings. General rule of thumb is to have at least three to six months worth of savings, or not savings, but three to six months worth of expenses saved up. All right, so this is a very hard step. You know, it's, it's not complicated. You can get there relatively quick if you're dedicated enough, but sometimes people give up. You know, when it's time to build a Mercy Savings account, we have to stay motivated. This too shall pass. Mercy Savings account is doable because people are doing it. And a lot of people are doing it, making less money than you are. All right. So keep this in mind. Mercy Savings, general rule of thumb is to have at least three to six months worth of expenses saved up. All right? That's powerful. But um, that's it right there. Um, This is my contact information. If you ever want to reach out. Again, this is Coach Wade, Bowtie Banker. Until we meet again, you guys have a great day. Take care. I'll see you guys at the top.